Uh, we're we're going to start with uh, RL, and remember what the step response is. The step response is where energy is being added to the magnetic field, so energy buildup. Uh, but after a long period of time, the inductor behaves just like a piece of wire. So let's say our circuit looks like this. Uh, here's the resistor. Here's uh, the inductor. There is some voltage uh, across the inductor. That's going to be a function of time. Uh, the switch is initially open, but it is closed at T equals zero. And uh, this is our voltage source, so let's say it has a voltage of V sub S over here. So initially there is no energy inside uh, the magnetic field of the inductor. So at T equals zero, when the switch is closed, that's when the current begins to flow. Now, if you know how inductors behave, if you remember that part, uh, the inductor is initially going to create a back EMF to oppose the change in, uh, in current through the inductor. So that is going to oppose the current flow, at least initially. However, over time, that's going to die down. Uh, the change in current is going to slowly, uh, the, the current is going to slowly change until it is moving continuously through here. And at that point, all of the current is moving through the inductor, uh, and that current is just I is equal to V over R. So that's, and, and the inductor at that point is just behaving like it's a piece of wire. Okay, so if we uh, think in terms of KVL here, uh, the voltage across the source there is equal to I R uh, plus uh, the voltage across the inductor, which is L D I D T. Okay, now this, the at least the right hand portion over here, this looks very similar to something we've seen before. However, uh, the left hand portion here is, is very different. It's no longer zero. Previously, uh, this was a first order ordinary differential equation. We had L D I D T uh, plus I R equals zero, but now we don't have that. Now it's equal to uh, some non-zero thing. So this is now a non-homogeneous. It's a little bit harder to solve. It's not that difficult. Uh, you can still solve this one with separation of variables because the V sub S is actually a constant here. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go through the steps. Remember, this isn't the differential equations class, but uh, we use differential equations in here. But you can go through the steps to solve that. And whenever you do, uh, you're going to end up with I as a function of time is equal to, and here's where you get a slightly different answer. V sub S over R minus uh, V sub S over R e to the negative t over tau. Now, tau is exactly the same thing. It is L over R. Okay? But look at this. Uh, we can simplify this a little bit. Let's factor out the V sub S over R. That's going to be 1 minus e to the negative t over tau, like that. Okay? So if you were to graph this, Let's think about what it looks like here. If we do I of T on that axis, T down here, uh, let's think about what's going on here. At T equals zero, switch is closed. Remember I said the current is going to be opposed by the back EMF generated uh, by the inductor, and that back EMF is generated because we have a DI DT. You cannot have an instantaneous change in current, so it's, this current's got to slowly change here. So the current initially is going to be down here at zero at T equals zero. Okay, but uh, over time it's going to uh, rise up and it's going to approach a maximum value and then it's going to level off and reach that maximum value in the limit here. Now if we were to trace that maximum value back to the vertical axis here, that is V sub S over R, like that. Okay, so that's how this is going to behave. Now, now if you think about it, that also uh, should be exactly the way you expected it to turn out because the current, even though it initially starts out at zero, it slowly builds up. 
And after a long time, how long is a long time? Five tau. After five tau, this uh, inductor it behaves just as if it wasn't, wasn't there. So the circuit behaves as if the inductor wasn't there. There's still energy stored in the magnetic field inside the inductor, but the current is just going to go straight through. So after a long time, five tau, uh, the current is essentially V sub S over R. Okay? So that is the step response for uh, an RL circuit uh, for the current at least. Now let's think in terms of um, let's think in terms of uh, how that one minus e to the negative t over tau behaves. Because we've already made this chart once where let's say that we have a chart here and we've said t and we did e to the negative t over tau. Well now let's expand that and do 1 minus e to the negative t over tau. And after 1 tau of time, we said this is down to like 0 0.367 something. Uh, but this is 1 minus that, so this is 0 0.63 something. Okay? And then after 2 tau, this is down to 0 0.135. Uh, this is going to be like 0.86. Uh, 3 tau, uh, I'm just rounding these numbers here and I could round them wrong. Uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, 0 0.049, so that's actually close to 0 0.05, so that makes this one like 0 0.95. So it's 95% up to its maximum value by 3 tau. After 4 tau, uh, this is point. Uh, 0, 0.018, which means it's 0.98%. And after 5 tau, uh, we're below 1%, so it's 0 0.006, uh, which makes this 0.994, approximately. So it's 99% done after that. So it's, it's less than 1% left. To finishing. Uh, so once again, 5 tau is the time for this uh, term that's in the parenthesis, the 1 minus e to the negative t over tau. It takes 5 tau for that to complete its process as well. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, turn our attention to the voltage. Let's say that we wanted to figure out what this voltage is. We got the current. So what is V sub t, in other words? Well, it's going to follow the same general pattern, but you've got to use your circuit's knowledge to figure this out. How is that inductor going to behave? Initially, it's got a back EMF right at t equals zero that opposes the current, that doesn't allow the current through. But then, after a long time, all of the current is going uh, through it there. So if all of the current is going through it and it's behaving like a piece of wire, what's the potential difference across a piece of wire? And the answer is zero. So you expect this to behave a little differently than what the current function looks like. You expect it actually uh, to decay, to be a decaying exponential. In other words, we're kind of expecting this based upon our circuit's knowledge that the V of T versus T is going to start at some maximum value and then decay over time like that. Okay, but how do you find the V of T? Well, V is just L di dt. Okay, this is what the i looks like down here. So you take the derivative of that. So it's just L times the derivative with respect to time of V sub s over r times 1 minus e to the negative t over tau. So we need to take the derivative of that. Uh, let's see. Um, this first term, take the derivative, I'm, I'm imagining this V sub S over R being distributed through. This, so this first term with the one is going to go to uh, zero. Uh, then we're going to have the derivative of this over here. So we're going to have uh, V sub S over R. Now I'm taking that negative sign, put it right there. And we're going to have uh, a factor that's going to be negative one over tau times E to the negative T over tau. So 
right just like that. Now, if you uh, plug in for tau, remember what tau is. Tau is L over R. If you were to plug in for uh, tau, L over R, you're going to discover that the L's will cancel since this is 1 over tau. And you're going to end up with something that looks like this. The negatives are also going to cancel. Uh, you're going to end up with something that, uh, the, oh, by the way, the R will also cancel here because you've got an R there. So this is L over R. You, you're, it's going to cancel out. Uh, this is going to end up being uh, V sub S E to the negative T over tau, which using your circuits knowledge, you figured out, yeah, that, that's what it ought to look like. So having a familiarity with these uh, 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 circuit elements, how they behave when you turn the switch on and, and what to expect, like uh, they're either going to rise up and level off or they're going to decay like that. Those are really the only two possibilities here. Uh, either the quantity you're after, voltage or current, is going to rise up and level off or it's going to decay over time. So that's, that's really the only two possibilities. Let's very quickly look at uh, an RC uh, step response as well, now that we've got all that under our belt here. Okay, so let's say that we've got a uh, circuit current source. Uh, we've got resistor and switch and capacitor here. Okay, so this is our capacitor, uh, this is our resistor. Uh, the switch is initially open, but the switch is closed at T equals zero. And this has current source I sub S. Okay, initially this is an incomplete circuit, so there's nothing, no energy going over here to the capacitor. Initially all the current is just over here uh, in the resistor, right here. Uh, you could figure out what the voltage is if you knew what R was and what I sub S was. You could figure out what the voltage was across that resistor right away. Okay, uh, but there's no uh, there's no energy in, uh, stored in the capacitor, so nothing is there before T equals zero. However, at T equals zero, the switch is closed. Now, at T equals zero, then when you get to this junction, when the current comes around and it gets to this junction, then it has a choice to go down this way or to go that way after that switch is closed. Well, all of that current is going to go down this way. And the reason is because there is nothing opposing it over here. Remember how the capacitor creates a displacement current across its plates. The current comes in, builds up a charge on one plate, which induces the charge on the other plate, so it looks like that current is passing right straight through. So at least for the fraction of a moment, right after t equals zero, all of that current's going to be flowing over here. Now you can do that. You can have an instantaneous change in current for the capacitor. You cannot have an instantaneous change in voltage. Okay, So you've got to keep that in mind as well. So let's go through the steps here of uh, looking at what this equation is going to look like and, and try to find the equation of state, the first order differential equation for this circuit. Okay, what we're going to do, the way, way that we're going to do it is we're going to sum the currents away from this top essential node. So I've kind of messed it up here. So let's say there's the top essential node there. I'm going to imagine a current going that way, a current going down this way, and a current going that way. So this is essentially node voltage uh, at that point. Well, the one going to the left, that's going to be negative I sub S. Okay, the one going down... Uh, bottom, I'm going to call this uh, node voltage here. Uh, well, the node voltage here is going to be the voltage across the capacitor. Because if I call this my ground down here, then that node is going to have the same voltage as the capacitor. So that one is V sub C over R. That's the current going down the middle. And now over to the right hand side, uh, that current is going to be C dV sub C dt. And now all of that's equal to zero. So that came about because of a node voltage equation. I'm going to rearrange the terms just so uh, it looks a little easier to read. dV sub C dt uh, plus V sub C over R 
C. You can tell what I've done is I've divided through by the C, so I've got RC on bottom there. And then I'm going to put the I on the other side. It's constant, so it's going to be I sub S over C, like that. Now, this is our first order ordinary differential equation. That's the equation of state for this uh, circuit here, with the, this RC circuit. This is, again, a step response. So, uh, how do you solve this one? Well, same sort of way. You can go through the possibilities or through the process of uh, solving this if you want to. I'm just going to jump to the solution here. Uh, v sub C, as a function of time, is equal to I sub S R plus, parenthesis, V naught, that's V at uh, zero, minus I sub S R E to the negative T over tau. And uh, since this is an RC circuit, tau is just equal to RC, like that. Okay, so once again, we've got something that looks a little uh, similar. Now, you see that V naught right there? That came about when you tried to solve the circuit here. You, that's the initial voltage uh, that's on the capacitor. And uh, you may have seen uh, something similar that's, uh, you know, if we did like uh, uh, I dt plus V naught, that's the voltage. You know, we've, you've seen equations like that. Okay, well, that's that V naught. That's where that came from. That's the initial voltage across the capacitor. But for our example here, that is zero. So V naught is zero for our capacitor. So this reduces down to I sub S R minus uh, I sub S R. E, uh, did this wrong. Ignore that. It's going to be I sub S R minus I sub S R E to the negative T over tau. Okay, maybe I did it right in the first place. Uh, but that's what it looks like. Now, you can factor out the I sub S R, and I've got one minus E to the negative T over tau. Once again, so uh, this one uh, is going to look very similar. I've got um, my V sub C versus T starts off at zero, rises up, levels off to some maximum value in the limit, and that maximum value is going to be I sub S R there. Okay, So that's the voltage across the capacitor. Now what if I, uh, I want to find uh, the current? What if I want to find this current going through the capacitor there. Okay, well, I equals C dV dt, and that voltage is the voltage across the capacitor. This current is current through the capacitor. So you just take this, you take the derivative of it, and you've got the equation for that. Now, what do you expect that to look like? Remember what we talked about at the beginning. All of the current is going to pass through here initially, uh, which is going to build up a very slow increase in the potential difference between these capacitors. And when I say very slow, I mean within 5 tau, it's going to build that up. So it's, it's going to quickly uh, increase the voltage across this, but the current initially is going to be very high. So what do you expect the current through that capacitor to look like? Well, I expect the current to look like... I sub C of T, starting high and going low, like that. In fact, I expect that to be I sub S, all of the current to be going through that capacitor at least at T equals zero. Well, I'm going to leave it as an exercise to you to take this equation, take your V sub C that you've got down here at the bottom, uh, and take the derivative of it, multiply it by C, and you're going to discover exactly what you end up with is I sub C is going to be I sub S E to the negative T over tau. That should be exactly what you end up with. All right. All right. So what we've done now is we've gone through all of these uh, natural and step responses for both RL and RC circuits. Now what I want to do is turn our attention to a more general approach because you have probably noticed that there are patterns present in every one of these. 
And those patterns are going to allow us to figure out uh, uh, more general solutions that are going to apply. You may have also noticed that uh, the, uh, the solutions are very similar to each other uh, because the differential equations are very similar to each other. Now, let's uh, really, there's really only four uh, possible ways to arrange these simple RC circuits. Uh, and RL circuits. Let's say that, uh, well, in fact, let's draw all four, or all four of them. You can have an R and an L, like that. So you can have an R uh, and an L with some voltage there. You could also have a situation like this, where Maybe you've got an L here, there's your R, and this is some I. Uh, now, these two circuits, you may notice, are equivalent to each other. If you think of that being the terminals, then what's on the left-hand portion there of the pin is a uh, the Venn equivalent. So you've got a VTH and an RTH. That, and the load here is uh, the inductor. But you could do a transformation, a source transformation on that, and this is ISC, which is the same as uh, VTH over RTH. So that is uh, the Norton equivalent. And here the resistor would be RTH, and once again, these would be the terminals. So you've got the inductor as the load on either one of those two cases right there. Now, uh, let's say that you've got, uh, let's say, a capacitor now. So, capacitor. Once again, you got some voltage, you got a resistor, and you got your capacitor. Once again, this is a Davinian equivalent. Or, with source transformation, you can get uh, the Norton out of it. And that's, once again, is ISC. And this is our TH. Okay, so really, you've got four possibilities here. Now, in each of these cases, you're probably going to be interested in whatever the voltage is across the inductor, uh, or whatever this uh, current is, or the voltage across that, and whatever this current is here, uh, or the voltage across this guy, and whatever that current is, or the voltage across uh, the capacitor there and whatever that current is. So you're going to be interested in those currents or those voltages in all of those cases there. Okay, for each of uh, these equations then, there is a pattern uh, that is evident. All of, the, all of the equations of state reduce down to this. Let me show you. dx dt, and x is either going to be the voltage or the current that you're interested in, plus x over tau equals, and that's supposed to be a kappa, a uh, Greek letter kappa. Okay, now you might say, well, I don't, I'm not seeing that. Well, think back. You had uh, dv dt plus r over lv equals zero, okay? That was uh, the equation for the natural response for an RL circuit, okay? So, the V is X, the V is X here, uh, the tau, you notice that's tau on bottom, tau is L over R for an RL circuit, so it's one over that, so we got R over L here. And the K happens to be zero, the K happens to be zero because it's the natural response. However, if we uh, did that same sort of thing for the, uh, 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 for the, uh, I'm sorry, for the capacitor, then uh, you're going to have di dt uh, plus i over rc, uh, that's equal to zero. So there's the natural response for the rc. And then the step response equations looked, um, uh, I guess, pretty similar, uh, except you're not going to have the uh, 
the zero over here on the right hand side for each one of these. So if you're talking about the RL, we set it up so that we had this equation as our equation of state plus R over LI equals V sub S over L, or for, um, for the capacitor, the step response was uh, dV dt plus V over RC equals I sub S over C. So down here on bottom, these are the step responses. These are the natural responses and this is for the inductor and these are for uh, these two over here for the capacitor. So we've got uh, a tau value and we've got a k value here or a kappa value for each one of those. Now if you pay attention to this and, and you spend some time with these equations and you start seeing patterns in here, in each case the x is going to be either v or i. I think that part is obvious. But in each case, that x approaches a constant value. So in the end, in the limit, the x is going to be 0 or it's going to approach the constant value. Remember, in some cases, we had the rising leveling off exponential. And in other cases, we had the decaying exponential. So it's going to be one of those. It's either going to uh, in the limit go to zero or in the limit level off to some maximum value here. So that final value, that let's call that x sub f, that's x final. In each case, if you know which one of these cases you've got, the x final is always going to be the kappa times the tau. Okay? So that's the final value, always. Okay? Uh, that means that in each of these cases, you can solve these equations. In fact, you could even use this general form right here and go through the process of solving it. And here's what you would end up with. I'm going to get a, another sheet of paper here. I'll just use the back side. Okay. And you're going to end up with a generic solution that looks like this. X final plus X at T naught, and T naught is the first time when the, when the switch is closed, minus X final times E to the negative T minus T naught over tau. Okay, so this is the final value. This is the initial value. And once again, that's final. And T naught is uh, the time the switch is thrown. That could be T equals zero, but that's the time the switch is thrown. That's when you start making the observation. And then tau here is uh, the time constant. Okay, so uh, everything that we have just done, we've spent, what, three videos going through the, or maybe it's four videos by this point, I don't know, going through the natural and step response for all of these, uh, all of these various RL and RC circuits. But it all boils down to this is your solution. So really, this is all you need to know. So if you want to find the natural and step response for an RL and RC circuit, then all you have to do is identify which, what variable you're interested in. Are you interested in I or are you interested in V? Okay, figure out which one of those you're interested in because that's going to be your X. All right, then determine the initial values. So determine X at T naught. Now that could be X at zero. Uh, we've sometimes called it X naught or V naught or I naught or I sub S, whatever it is, that's the initial value. Whenever the switch is thrown, that's the initial value right there. That X sub F is going to be kappa times tau though. You're going to need to calculate tau, so tau is going to be either RC or L over R. But then, once you've gotten these things figured out, once you've got these initial and final values figured out, um, then you just plug it in. And oftentimes, you don't even have to do any calculations here. You can, uh, like I said, using your circuit's knowledge, you can almost 
just by inspection, figure out what the final value of x is going to be or what the initial value of x is going to be. And then almost immediately uh, jump to the solution. Now let me show you an example of, of us doing, being able to do that. So that's called the general approach and we're going to use the general approach here. All right, here is our problem. Current source, resistor in parallel with it, switch, and capacitor. Okay, we're interested in the voltage across that capacitor. So there's our capacitor, switch is open, uh, switch is closed at T equals zero. There's our R, and this is going to be I, so that's, so that's our, our source there. Okay, now previous, previously we had to go through finding the, uh, the differential equation, the first order differential equation. Uh, then we had to go through the steps of solving it and then we figured out, and I will just show you what the answer it was uh, in those cases. V sub C of T is going to be I sub S times R times one minus E to the negative T over tau, and tau in this case is just going to be RC. Okay, so we know that that's the answer right there, but let's use our general approach and let's try and figure out what the, what the answer should look like. Remember, here's the general approach. Uh, X of T is equal to X sub F plus X, uh, let's call it T naught, um, minus X sub F times E to the negative T over tau. So this is our general uh, uh, general solution. Uh, we need to figure out what uh, what we're interested in. Well, we're interested in x sub c. So I'm sorry, v sub c. So v sub c is what x is. Okay, that's the first step. Now let's figure out what v sub c at zero is. That's the initial value. Well, v sub c at zero, since the switch is open before t equals zero, uh, that's going to be zero. Okay, okay. so that's the next step. What about um, V sub C at uh, infinity, at time infinity, as T goes to infinity? In other words, what is V sub C final? Okay, well that's going to be kappa tau. All right, well what is uh, kappa here? Well, in order for you to remember what kappa is, you're going to have to uh, look back at the differential equations, and it turns out uh, that it's I sub S over C multiplied by tau, which is RC, so it's just I sub S R. In other words, the final value for the capacitor is just going to be um, whatever the voltage is across this thing right here. That's, that's the final voltage. Okay. Now that, that now you did not have to go through this to figure that out. Your circuits knowledge should have been able to tell you that this final voltage across this is going to be the final voltage across that resistor there. Well, what's the final voltage across that resistor? It's just I times R. That's I sub S times R. So that's your final value. Okay. So that's your your X final or your uh, V sub C final. Okay, then uh, what about tau? Well, tau is going to be RC in this case. So we're ready to apply that right there. V sub C at T is equal to X final. Let's see, where was X final? That's just I sub S R. Um, uh, I'm sorry, plus... Uh, let's see, what is the initial value? The initial value was zero minus the final again, I sub S R times E to the negative T over tau, which is just RC. Uh, simplifying it, I sub S R is one minus E to the negative T over tau, where tau equals RC. There. There's our answer, which matches that right there. Okay, So you can use the general approach here to get to the same solutions that we did. So that equation right there, if I were you, I would commit that to memory. Because you're probably going to use it uh, quite a bit. 
Now, let's uh, follow through on that. Let's say that uh, I wanted to find the current, this current here, okay? Well, you use the same equation. You don't use a different equation. You use exactly the same one. All right, I want uh, the current. So that's just going to be uh, I sub C. That's what I'm interested in. So I sub C of T is what X is. So let's write that down. I sub C of T is equal to I final. Now what's I final? What's the cur final current going to be over here? Well, the final current is going to be zero after this thing gets charged up. So this is going to be zero plus Okay, now what about the initial current? The initial current, well, that's, that's just going to be I sub S. I sub S minus, and we're back to the final again, zero, times E to the negative T over tau. So what does that tell me? That tells me that I sub C T is equal to I sub S E to the negative T over tau. There. So you can use this same technique on any component where you have, or any type of circuit where you have one R and one C. However, in reality, you're gonna have multiple R's, you're gonna have multiple C's. So what we need to do is we need to f go through an approach so that we can figure it, uh, so that we can, uh, I guess, wean it down uh, so that we only have one R and one C. If we can do that, then we can use this general approach right here and with no problems, okay? And we'll, we'll do that in just a minute, okay? In the meantime, I wanna show you something else. Uh, let's say that we've got a um, op amp. I bet you you know what this one is. One feedback resistor. Uh, this is the resistor that's in series with the source here. Um, what is that? That's an inverting op amp. So it's an inverting op amp. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that and I'm going to replace it with a capacitor, okay? And I'll redraw that on a clean sheet of paper here. So the only difference here is that now we have a capacitor where the feedback resistor used to be. So this is C sub so F, that's a C. We still got our output over here in exactly the same way. Okay, let's solve this one. Well, uh, using the techniques that we know, uh, the, uh, uh, the initial what am I trying to say? The op amp constraints. That's what I'm trying to say. The ideal op amp constraints. Uh, v sub p equals v sub n, and i sub p equals i sub n equals zero. Well, this is uh, v sub p, and you see it's going straight to ground. So we know that v sub p is going to be zero. So that means this v sub n uh, is also going to be zero here. Okay. Uh, we know that. We also know that these currents going in here, that's I, that's I sub n, this is I sub p, that those are going to be zero. So we just know that by inspection. Uh, by inspection, V sub p equals V sub n equals zero. All right. Now, at the V sub n node, then we use our regular technique of uh, node voltage equation. So uh, V sub n minus V sub S over V sub S, uh, plus now uh, the current going this way is C sub F times dV dt. But this V here, this V is equal to V sub N minus V output, like that, okay? 
So this is the derivative of, of that right there. So the v sub n, that's zero. This v sub n, that's zero. And what are we left with? Minus v sub s over r sub s. How did that get on bottom? That's a mistake. R sub s, that should be r sub s. Thank you for pointing that out. I just got that message. Okay, plus, um, I'm screwing up here, minus uh, C sub F uh, D V naught DT, and that's all equal to zero. In fact, all that's equal to zero as well. Okay, so we got minus signs on everything. We can get rid of that minus sign. Just rewrite it one more time. V sub S, R sub S, plus C sub F DV naught DT equals zero. Okay, now we've got, a, a once again, a first order differential equation. We should be able to solve that, but really remember what we want to do here. We want to write the output in terms of the input. And once we've done that, we've solved this op-amp problem. So uh, let's uh, do separation of variables uh, for this here. I'm going to leave uh, dv naught dt on one side by itself, and let's put everything else on the other side. So I'm going to have a minus uh, v sub s over r sub s, and I'm going to uh, what divide by the c sub f, so c sub f. So you notice what I've got over here. That's v sub s over what is effectively the time constant here. Uh, now what am I going to do? I'm going to integrate both sides. And let me just move up here for that. Uh, whenever you do that on the left hand side here, you're going to end up with v naught as a function of time. Now we're going from that initial time t naught to some later time t. So I'm, it's actually going to be v naught minus v naught at t naught. And that's equal to this stuff over here on the right hand side, which is minus the integral of v sub s over r sub s c sub f uh, dt plus, uh, no, that, that's all. That's all right there. So when it comes to v naught of t, that's equal to minus the integral v sub s over r sub s c sub f dt plus v naught at t naught. Okay, now look at what we've got here. This says that the output is the integral of the input. Now it's a scaled integral because of these constants down here, r sub s and c sub f. You could factor those out of the integral though, and this is just the integral of the uh, input, uh, plus whatever the initial voltage uh, was at uh, t equals zero. Okay. Um, now, that output may have been zero. There may have been no voltage initially over here on the output, in which case that would have been zero right there. But what do you think this one is called? This is an integrator op amp. Uh, it's an integrating amplifier because you're going to get out uh, the integral of whatever the uh, input was. And uh, well, you might say, well, how, how does that work? Well, if you, uh, let's say you input um, a step function. So uh, let's say the uh, V sub S versus time, you do some kind of uh, step function and it makes a transition down at uh, point uh, at time T1. And then it goes over here goes back up, and let's say the entire period of time is uh, 2 T1. So it starts here at 0. It goes up to the maximum value uh, of uh, V sub M, and then it goes to some negative value down here, which is going to be minus V sub M. Okay? So that's, that's what the source is doing. Okay, well, uh, what should the integral function look like? In other words, what's the output going to look like? Uh, for something like that. Okay, well, uh, this is the output. 
just bringing that time t1 down here. There's that time uh, 2 t1 right there. This is the t axis. Okay, well, what's what's that going to look like? Well, remember, uh, this is the it's going to be inverted uh, to begin with, so it's going to look something like that because we're taking the integral of that thing, and it's uh, the reason it's down here is because it's it's negative. Uh, but then right here it changes and does something like that. So I would hope that you would uh, be able to figure that out. If you if you need to do the math to see that, then uh, you know the v output of t is going to be minus one over r c of the integral of whatever the source function is uh, d t uh, plus v naught at t naught, and you're going from t naught to time t here. So what are you doing? You take this function here between zero and t one. Uh, and figure out, take the integral of it. Okay, well, it's a constant, so when you integrate that, you're going to get a variable function in it. The negative sign is going to bring it down here, so it's going to be like that. And then over here, it's going to be like that. Uh, I'm assuming that this is zero. Uh, my advice would be spend a little time with this. See uh, if you can work your way backwards here. This one has a slope that is downward, so the derivative of this is going to be a constant. So it's linear downward here. Uh, the only reason that it's below the line here in the negative region has to do with that negative sign right there. Okay, we'll stop right there uh, for today, and, and then we'll work some more problems with uh, using the general approach, and maybe we'll talk about some other things as well. Okay.